Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your divine love. The one that sought us out, even when we were, had no interest in what concerns you, you sought us out and you touch our hearts and you convince us by your word and we fall in love with your loving kindness and your tender mercies. We fell in love because we recognize you are awesome and you are an almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. And that your wish was that we become your children to the belief in the resurrected Christ. So speak to our hearts this morning through your words. And we pray that we will be better people from when we first came in this morning. Speak to us because we're listening. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. If you'll take your Bibles and turn to Proverbs chapter 1. <coughs> we started a message last week in, as our New Year's message, how to be a smart aleck, how to be a wise guy, a wise woman, in 2024. So today I want to finish that. And in so doing, I would like to remind you that there is no magic switch that we switch on on January 30, I mean, December 31st, our, our 1st of January, and everything changes and goes our way. It takes work and it takes effort. You all know that. And if you really want to have a new year, we said last week, we started off by saying, we need to uh, develop a healthy fear of the Lord. Proverbs chapter one and verse seven says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instructions. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. But if you want to be wise, I don't care how educated you think you are, without God, you're a fool. And so now wisdom, we want to seek wisdom. The Bible says, uh, you know, first of all, seek whatever you want to seek, but seek wisdom first. Because wisdom is the foundation stone that we stand on to accomplish anything in our lives. Now, as we hear the words wisdom thrown around us, some of us think that wisdom comes with old age. Sometimes, maybe. But you know, some of the biggest fools you've known is old people. <laughs> really. Uh, you know, talking to senior people is the most difficult people to talk to about Christ. Because they've been living their lives all their life and turning down the offer from Jesus Christ. And they get so hardened that they don't want to talk about heavenly things. Some of them you talk about death. So I don't want to hear anything about death. I have no time for that. But guess what? Whether you have time or not, Mr. Death is coming for you. And when he comes, he's not going to give you a second chance. So the Bible says, if we don't get to know Christ and study God's word, we are fools. Because we live in a world that is only temporary. Some of us, we think we're going to live to be 100, but then what? You die. Sooner or later. And the, pre the question then is, are you prepared to die? Now, wisdom is the ability to use your experience and knowledge so that you can make sensible or reasonable decisions and make sensible judgments. And if you're, if you're going to go into this New Year's doing the same old, same old, you're going to get the same old, same old results. You want to improve this year in your life, the life of your family? You need to get wisdom. And that's why I'm encouraging you today to read your Bible through 
every day. Promise yourself, I'm going to read God's word. Promise yourself that I don't care, come rain or whatever. My first priority every day is to get into God's word. And if you're a Christian and you're not, you're starving. You're underfed. And no wonder why we fall about every little trick of the devil. Make up your mind. Because the Bible will give you the knowledge you need to make all kinds of good decisions. Decisions that will help you have a happy new year. And the Bible will help you to develop a healthy fear of the Lord. Notice I didn't say to be afraid of the Lord. That's a totally different word. Fear of the Lord. In other words, fear of the Lord means to honor God. To live in his face. To live as if he's right beside you every day. And he is, isn't he? If you're a Christian, the Bible says the Spirit of God lives where? In you. You are the house of the Lord. Reminds me of, a, of two guys that were going to church one morning. And they were smoking like crazy, you know. And when they got to church, the guys, come on, let's go. He said, no, I've got to finish my cigarette. He says, don't worry about that. You've been shoving that in the temple all the way down here, so you might as well walk into the church with it. Your body is the temple of the Lord. Oh, you know that. You've got you to gotta know how to dress the temple. You've got to know where to take the temple. You've got to know how, what to put in the temple because it's the residence of the Spirit of Almighty God. You remember that we said that fear, the fear of the Lord, can involve two things. One is that God can hurt you. God can hurt you. And the second thing is, amazingly, we can hurt God. We can hurt God by the way we behave. Can you imagine you as a child of God and, and God and, and Christ is sitting in heaven and you doing all kinds of nonsense down here? And the angels are watching because the Bible said the angels stand on tippy toes looking into this idea of salvation because they can't figure out, oh, could God could forgive a sinner? Because they've never seen you, see. They don't know what it means to be forgiven. But can you sit them and look at them and say, when, and the angel is thinking, when I remember how Christ suffered and you call yourself a Christian and you're doing that? But I think the Father thinks differently, doesn't he? And so did Jesus. He just lifted up his hand and said, they're under the blood. They're under the blood, Father. So we need wisdom to know how to live, how to navigate this life. Because without it, we will never be content. We'll never be able to, to live right and do right unless we have the wisdom of God. And we can hurt God by looking into other areas to give us happiness and contentment. We, we can start, we, we, you know, some of us, we, we, we run things down. We think that if we can get this, we're going to be happy. If we can get that, we're going to be happy. Which leads some of us to drugs and all kinds of stuff. And yet we're not happy. You see, when we fear God, we want to honor him and to reverence him. We recognize that he is holy and he is righteous. And we should humbly come into his presence with incense of our prayers and our worship. But it doesn't take, it's not easy to do that, is it? You know that sometimes you think to yourself, oh no, I'm going to leave my Bible reading until I'm going to my bed. And you pick up your Bible and guess the next thing you'll find. The next hour, you're still in the same verse, wondering, oh, I thought I read this verse before. And he says, oh, I'm going to pray and kneel down, and the next minute, whoever is with you can hear you Z's. Amen? You see, because we're fallen creatures, it's very easy for us to go the other way, isn't it? It's very easy for us to sit back and relax. It's very easy to say, no, I'm not going to read my Bible. I'll make up next week. Because the, the devil loves to hear that. 
Because you see, it's the embedded word and the implanted word in our spirit that's going to cause us to be wise to the things that is happening around us and how to navigate this messed up world. It's going to be the word of God. And the reason why we, should, we must actively seek him every day is because, as the hymn writer puts it, we're prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. It's very easy to fall off the wagon. So let me suggest a few ways you can train your, your minds and yourself or condition ourselves to develop a healthy fear of the Lord in our lives. The first one I suggest this morning is that we must have a desire. We have to have a desire to develop a consciousness of having God in our lives. So the question is, do you really want to reverence God? Do you really want to worship God? We go to church, but why do we go to church? Oh, we go to church because we're going to hear the songs or whatever. Do you come to church this morning with one thing in your mind? I'm going to worship God. My going there is bringing my offering of myself to be in the presence of God with other like-minded people of God. Do you really want to worship God? Because if you really want to do, God will help you. God will help you. But you got to ask him. you got to ask him. Listen to Nehemiah's praying, Nehemiah chapter 1 and verse 11. He's praying. He's coming to do a great job for God. Here to hear him now. Oh, Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this, your servant. Remember, he's a governor. He's a big shot. But in front of God, he said, I'm a servant. We need to recognize that we are servants. So he says, be attentive to the prayer of this, your servant, and to the prayer of your servants who delight in what, Nehemiah? In revering your name. You see, Lord, we're praying because we just love to lift up your name. Give us that strength and energy that we need that when we come together, we will worship God in spirit and in truth. Secondly, you must be willing to learn. Do you know we can't, you can't teach anybody anything if they don't want to learn? You can beat them. You can try to beat, them, beat it into their head. It's not going to work. But when they have a desire to work and to learn, they soak it up like a sponge, don't they? You see, none of us have this down path. None of us. We struggle. So we need to be taught and for us to be taught, we must be able and willing to learn. And the Spirit of God wants to teach us things. And as he sent you teachers and preachers to help you along. Remember God's command to Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 10. Where God said to Moses, assemble the people before me that I might let them hear my words so that they may learn to fear me all the days that they live in this earth and that they may teach their children. It's important that you know because what you're going to teach your children? You don't want to, the relationship with God be lost when you die and gone. Your children should be able to carry that on to their children the next generation. Thirdly, we must choose to fear the Lord. We must choose to fear the Lord. We must choose to want to lift God up. We must decide to treat God the way that God should be treated and honored. In other words, we must be willing to remember that he is holy. He is righteous. He is beyond our comprehension. So we don't use his name in vain. And we honor him. Because if we don't, verse 28 and 29 says, Then they will call on me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but they shall not find me. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear 
the Lord. We need to make that choice. We need to be like a Joshua and say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. So yes, you've got to make a choice to worship. You've got to make a choice to fear God. No one can do it for you. You can take people to church all you want, but until they say, yes, Lord, there's not going to be any change. Have you ever said to yourself, I'm going to live my life with a reverential respect for God? I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure everything I do honors God? Have you ever said that out? If you have, you need to say to yourself, Lord, help me to do this. Because sometimes we promise God we're going to do it and we're not going to. Because we can't do it without his help, you see. And the Bible says it's better for you not to promise than to promise and don't do it. So God is not into this nonsense. A promising when we get into difficulties. Lord, if you do this, I'll do that. And God said, what you got that I need? Really? You want to swap with me and exchange with me? No, no. You come reverentially. And you say, Lord, I don't know. And I'm nothing. You're everything. Help me in this. And because God wants to help. He really does. The last thing I suggest in regards to that is. You demonstrate the fear of the Lord. When you live obediently. If you fear God, you will obey his word. And when we fear God's word, we will obey him. Isn't that amazing? We used to sing a little song years ago that obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. And it's, it's not true. If we claim we are Christians, there's only one way we can show it. And it's to show it by our obedience to the word of God. Jesus said if you love me. Keep my commandments. If you love me. Do the word of God. If you love me. Come and worship me. And bow down before me. And have me give you the joy that you seek. Right. And then the song used to go here. Yeah, Obedience is the very best way to show that I believe. He says now having a change in my behavior. Because happiness is the Lord. But you've got to have a change in your behavior. See, Proverbs 14 verse 2 says, He who walks in his uprightness fears the Lord. But he who is crooked in his ways despises him. You say, I don't despise the Lord. I just don't, you know. No, no, if, you, if, you, if you're not serving him, you despise him. When you fear the Lord, your life will show it. And conversely, when you don't fear the Lord, your life will show it. Your words will show it. Your attitude, will, you say things that people look at you and thinking, man, that's a godless person. But when you fear the Lord, what comes out of your mouth will be an encourage to others. A genuine fear of the Lord will cause you to hate evil. If we want 2024 to be different, then we need to start seeing the Lord in a different way, in a different light. So the question is, are you living your life in the fear of the Lord? Do you fear, do your fear of the Lord cause you to live right? Cause you to to, to go beyond what is, what, is, what is necessary to demonstrate your love for God. In Exodus chapter 20 and verse 10, Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, for God has come in order to test you, and in order that the fear of him may remain in you, so that you may not sin. When we fear God, we fear the results of our sin, don't we? Sometimes we're going to do things. Wait a minute. The Lord wouldn't be pleased with this. And you've got to catch yourself. 
because there's a healthy fear of God. And because there's a healthy fear of God in you, the spirit is in vogue. He literally has been given the, the authority now to speak to you and say, thou shalt not. Say, so, no, that will not please the Father. You are a child of God. He's, never, he's not going to tell you how oh, useless you are like some of us people tell one another. What he's going to say, you are a child of God. You were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God. And this thing is the last thing that will bring glory to God. And so we walk away and we say, thank you, Lord. For directing me, keeping me from sin. The best way to become a wise guy or a wise woman is to live with a healthy respect for God's awesomeness. He's awesome. You know, I don't know about you, but sometimes I hear people use throw that word around for the simplest of things. Oh, this is an awesome soup. This is an awesome dish. This is an no, it ain't. That word should only apply to his majesty, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's awesome. And he's worthy of our praise and our devotion. So I said earlier that we need to develop a healthy fear of the Lord. And secondly, I suggest to you this morning that we need to devote ourselves to the word of God. People, we need to read the Bible. You know, I'm told that the mission field of the cults are church people who don't read their Bible. They come and tell you that Jesus is a son of God and you know, you're gonna, this world is going to be refurbished and we're going to live happily in this world forever. Uh, and because we don't know the Bible, we go along with them. But if you remember, the Bible said this world is going to pass. And there's going to be what? A new heaven and a new earth. You know why there's going to, ha there's going to have to be a new heaven and a new earth? Because we're going to live with God. And this world is messed up. When God gave Adam and Eve authority in the garden, he gave them the power to demonstrate and to have authority, but they lost it. And Jesus had to come and die to give us that authority again. And so this world is messed up, it's tainted. And so God is gonna bring about a new creation so that he can live with his children without any possibility that sin will ever enter there. So it's gonna, this world has to pass. The psalmist says in Psalm 19 that the law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. You want to be wise? You've got to read the word of God. Psalm 119, 130 says, the unfolding of thy words give light. It gives understanding to the simple. When you know the word of God, there's no one who can call you simple. You know, I remember as a child, I remember men and women who, uh, as a kid, I used to look up to them wondering, how could they know so much scripture? And some of them couldn't even read. But they learned it. And you could not challenge them. They know the word. It was deep in their spirit. You see, because the Bible said the Lord of the Lord is perfect, restoring the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The Apostle Paul reminds Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15 that the scriptures which are able to give you wisdom and leads to salvation through faith in Christ. The only way you're going to know how to get to heaven is the scripture. So you cannot be wise without the word of God no matter how smart you think you are. 
if you don't know God's word, you lack wisdom. I guess you could say you're wisdom malnourished. So what can we do to become devoted to God's word? Let me suggest that you read the Bible through. Starting from Genesis to Revelation this year. Promise yourself. And if you, if sometimes you, you're going to miss a few days. But don't let that throw you off and you stop. Pick up where you left off and keep going. Get the word of God down into your spirit. Let it percolate. Let it challenge you, let it build you, let it energize you, and let it push you out to do great things for God. You said, well, I start reading it, but when I get to certain books, I just back off, Lord. I said, well, let me suggest you buy a one-year Bible. They break it down for you. You have an Old Testament reading, a New Testament reading, a psalm, and a few verses of Proverbs. Come to think of it, let me challenge you. Before you even start to read from Genesis, let me challenge you to read the book of Proverbs. Read the book of Proverbs for a month. And let me make it even easier. Proverbs had 31 chapters. I mean, we're late in January already. February, I only have 29 this year because it's a leap year, right? But come March... March has what? 31 days. Start reading the book of Proverbs, chapter 1. Don't, go, don't get all excited and start reading 10 chapters in one day and then forget for the rest of the month. One chapter a day. And when you're done, every month that has 31 days, start to read the book of Proverbs. Because the Bible says it was written by the wisest man who ever lived sharing his wisdom to you and me so that we may be wise how we live for God. Try that. Or if you can even go on the internet and Google um, reading through the Bible of the year and they'll give you a schedule. There's all kinds of schedule on there to help you to get the word of God in you so that you may able to be what you want to be this year because we need to be changed. Growth is not stagnant, you know. Some of us think, oh, we've grown in the Lord. Really? Are you growing? That's the question. So if you want to keep growing in the, in, 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 in the book and in God's word, knowing God more every day, begin to read his word. And then I'm going to suggest you bring your Bible to church. A lot of people don't bring Bible to church no more. Well, you bring your Bible to church and make sure that when I quote something, you can look it up and see that I'm not chicken. And you know what it'll do for you? It'll help you to work it out during the week. It'll help you to do your own Bible study. It'll help you to go home and say, you know, Pastor said this, but boy, I'm not too sure, you know. Be like the Bereans. After Paul speak, I mean, the Apostle Paul himself, they said, oh, we know you're a great speaker, Paul, but just a minute. Where's my Bible? And they flip the page and says, yeah, you're right. You're right. And then, of course, you can join us for our, our, our Bible study. We begin in the book of Hebrews uh, this week. It's going to be exciting, uh, challenging. It's a fearful book, but we're going to be studying it. And then, thirdly, determine to get wisdom. Determine to get wisdom. After you have developed the fear of the Lord and committing yourself to reading God's word, you can then make up your mind to get wisdom because you have to search for it. It don't come by you sitting down and wishing and hoping. You really have to put your everything into it. I want you to listen to the action verbs in Proverbs chapter 2, 1 to 5. My son, if you will receive my sayings, treasure my commandments in your heart. Make your ear attentive to wisdom. Incline your heart to understanding. For if you cry for discernment, lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver, 
and search for her as for hidden treasure. Then you will learn, you will discern the fear of the Lord and you will discover the knowledge of God. Three times Solomon says, if you, to impress upon the seeker, if you want it, you've got to search hard after it. And by the way, wisdom doesn't come with the package of getting older, as I said earlier. We have got to go after wisdom. We got to seek it. Somebody says that we can only be young once, but we can be immature indefinitely. We can only be young once, but we can be immature indefinitely. And boy, I've come across some immature saints. Everything that happens, they get out of sorts. Can uh, the NIV in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7 says, Wisdom is supreme. Therefore, get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. And the last thing I would suggest to you is that you ask God to give you wisdom. If we really want wisdom more than anything else in our lives, we need to ask of God who gives freely and abundantly. Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 6 says, For the Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Solomon became the number one wise guy because he asked for wisdom. Remember that? You can become wise by following James' advice in James chapter 1 and verse 5. James said, if any of you lacks wisdom, what should they do? Let him ask of God who gives to all generously and without reproach or finding fault, and it will be given to him. Can you remember that? He says, God gives generously. So if you want this year to be a happy new year, if you want your life to change in ways that you never thought possible, you need to ask God for wisdom to take you through this year. And of course, the bottom line is, You've got to dedicate your life to Jesus Christ. You've got to know him. If you're having, if you're hearing this message and you're not saved, you need to be saved. Because everything flows out of the relationship that you have with Christ. That's why when you come to know Jesus Christ personally, you can approach the throne of God with confidence. You don't want to say, Lord, I need this and I need that. And the Lord said, who are you? You need to know him. And he needs to know you as his own redeemed child. And you get to know God and his son by believing the Bible. The Bible said there is no name given among men whereby we must be saved but the name of Jesus. You've got to call upon him. And the Bible said if we believe in our heart and we confess with our mouth, we're saved. Question is, have you ever believed? Do you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? That he died for you? You out there in your room this morning, wherever you are, do you? Do you know that? And if you know, have you ever bowed your knees and said, Lord God, I'm a sinner. I need the Savior. And I understand Jesus Christ came to be my Savior. So I'm calling on him now for eternal life. Of course, you're Christians sitting in front of me and out there as well. What, what do you need to do? I think we need to rededicate our lives to Christ. The song says, starting all over again, it's going to be rough. But that's the way the Christian life is. It's rough. It's not all, praise the Lord, and I'm on our glory. There are storms. There are cul-de-sacs. There are U-turns. 
But because of the wisdom that comes from God, we will see all those as opportunities to worship. Because when you sit back and see what God has brought you through, you've got to get on your knees and say, thank you, Lord, for the victory. Thank you for saving me. Thanking you for bringing me through this test. What is sickness? What is relational stuff? He'll bring you through. Why? Because he's able. And he's giving you access to his word. And his word is what opens the door into God's blessing. You don't know the word? You don't know what the blessings are. How can you say, Lord, here's, here's what you promise. So here I am now, Lord, and I'm in this exact position of need. Will you come and fill my need? How are you going to know that? Got to get into the word. And the word makes you wise. So when you hear complaints, you, you distance yourself from complainers. Because you know God is not into complaining. Because he's, the Bible said he gives generously. So what do you got to complain about? So may God help us indeed. So that we'll get wisdom this year. We get it abundantly. Proverbs 3.13 says, How blessed is the one who finds wisdom and the one who gain understanding. How blessed this year is going to be for you when you recognize God is to be worshipped and served. How blessed are you going to do when you have understanding? In other words, you have the tools to live a life that will be pleasing to Almighty God. May God help you this way. Even though you may be along the line for a lot of years, that this will be a new beginning for us as together we find ways of magnifying God this year. And we don't have to search for ways. Go to the Bible. They show you. The experiences of the saints demonstrate to us how to acquire wisdom and how to fear the Lord. May God help us this day. That that will be our desire and he will fulfill it. Again, we thank you, Lord. You start off, off this year on a high note. Help us to maintain it through your word. Cause us to be faithful in our service to you, in our worship, and then as sent ones, after we have worshipped and you're blessed, give us the courage to go and bless somebody else. Tell them about the goodness of God. Tell them about what you've done for me. Tell them about how you desire to have all men come before you to be blessed and to be sent out into a world that is so dark. Oh, Lord, help us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 536 is our closing hymn. 536. This is a prayer, O oh, Master, let me walk with thee. In love. 
As we come, Lord, we can say with the psalmist, after we prayed, O oh Master, let me walk with thee. That if you see that there's any wicked way in me, lead me in a way everlasting. That is our prayer this morning. Show us our faults and cause us to recognize them and call upon you. Help us to be wise in recognizing that you are speaking and that we will call upon the name of the Lord. So Lord, at this beginning of the new year and a new month, we call upon your name to guide us through 2024. But first of all, Lord, we just want you to guide us through this month with all that it brings, one step at a time, from victory to victory. Lead us, we pray. And Lord, we pray that you'll clean us up. We're so happy, Lord God, to know that if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And you're talking to the redeemed. You reminded us that we're not perfect. But when we recognize that we're out of line, we'll come to you for a renewing. Give us the wisdom to recognize when we're out of line and when we're out of sorts. So we humbly admit today, Lord God, that we need you more than we have ever done. Send forth your spirit and fill us anew. Send to each one of us bowed in your presence this morning a new anointing of the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Spirit direct our path to the Savior. He said you're going to take things from him and express it to us and explain it to us. We give you the authority to do so now in our spirit. We abdicate the potentate of self. We get off the throne so that you may sit majestically and therefore guide us, our Savior, guide us through these turbulent waters. And we know as long as you're guiding, as long as you're in our boat, we know where we're headed. So remind us again, over and over 
that your word will profit us as we study it. It will guide us, it will teach us, and it will keep us in your care. So as we leave this place, O oh Lord, let the message continue to resonate in our spirit and help give us the due power that we need to seek your face as the most precious thing in the world. Now we ask you to bless your folks as they leave. Go to their homes. Bless the homes which they represent. And may there be an aura of your spirit that bring peace into this home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen.